All right, so let's start. Hmm? This is the meaning of the question. There is a sphere which is made up of metal whose radius is how much? Whose radius is how much? <clears throat> six by two, isn't it? Because the diameter of the sphere is given to you as six. So the radius will be six by two, which is equal to three centimeters. Now this has to be melted and drawn into a wire. Children, melted and, sorry. Melted and drawn means melted and recasted. Okay, melted and drawn means melted and recasted into what a wire. Now you all must be having a question over here. What is the shape of wire? Or what you should assume when the term wire is used? Very simple children, it's a cylinder. Okay, you should assume that the wire is in the shape of a cylinder. You all must have seen no children wire, the electric wire or the cylindrical pipes. They all are considered to be what? Cylinder in shape. Okay, they all are considered to be what? Cylinder in shape. So they are telling you it is converted into a wire which is cylindrical in shape. Cylindrical in shape whose radius is equal to 0 0.2 divided by 2. That is equal to 0 0.1 centimeter. So you found the you found the dimension of the sphere and the dimension of the cylinder. Now they are asking you find the length of the wire. Children, find the length of the wire. Find the length of the wire. That means the height of the cylinder. Isn't it? Before also I have told you. Before also I have told you. When does the height of a cylinder becomes the length of the cylinder? When the cylinder is falling, sorry, the cylinder has fallen on the surface. Right? When the cylinder has fallen on the surface, you call it as length. When the cylinder is standing erect, you call it as the height of the cylinder. Isn't it? So here they are asking us to find the height or the length of the cylinder. One simple technique I taught you from the beginning, I'm telling you when melting and recasting is mentioned in the question, you have to use this concept. Volume one is equal to what? Volume two. Why can't you just grab this information, children, and use it repeatedly? What is the first solid here, sphere? What is the formula? 4 by 3 pi r cube. Huh? How do you find volume of a cylinder? It's pi r square h. Isn't it pi r square h? You wrote the formula. Now you simplify. If it is possible, pi and pi will get cancelled. So what is left on the left-hand side? 4 by 3, capital R cube. What is left on the right-hand side? R square H. Was it so difficult? I, I don't think so, children. 4 by 3, what is the radius of the sphere? 3, I think. Huh? So it becomes 3 cube, which is equal to, how much is the radius of the cylindrical pipe? 0 0.1. So it becomes 0 0.1 square into, you have to find the height or the length of the cylinder. Substitution is done. Huh? Now let's start simplifying it. Children, I would recommend you to cancel 3 and 3 cube so that you are left with 4 into 3 square on the left-hand side. What is 0 0.1 square? It is 0 0.1 into 0 0.1, which is 0 0.01 multiplied by h. Agreed? Therefore, height will be what? 4 into 3 square divided by 0 0.01. So 4 into 3 square is what? 9, isn't it? Uh, 3 square is 9, divided by 0 0.01. If you want to remove those two decimal places, just multiply the numerator and denominator with 100. So 0 0.01 into 100 in the denominator and 4 into 9 into 100 in the numerator. So this is equal to, children, 4 into 9 into 100 whole divided by 1. 0 0.01 into 100 is what? 1. So 36 into 100, which is equal to 3,600 centimeters. Am I right with the units? Yeah, it's correct. 3,600 centimeters. Now, if you want to leave the answer in meter, you can leave it as 36 meters. Easy. How much time does it take? children? <laughs> but I'm telling you, it is melting and recasting. So the volume one is equal to volume two. I use that no. You people are not practicing anything at home. There's an evidence for that. Next to some.
<laughs> an iron pole consisting of a cylindrical portion an iron pole consisting of a cylindrical portion 110 cm high that means the height of the cylinder is how much 110 centimeter and the base diameter how much is the base diameter it's 12 centimeter so the radius will be equal to uh, 12 by 2 which is equal to 6 centimeter now nobody will do anything in your book i want to see how far you are able to solve on your own it is surmounted what is the meaning of surmounted one solid is placed on another solid isn't it one solid is placed on another solid where the base of both the solids are equal. Remember the word of surmounting. Huh? One solid is placed on another solid. So let me place the second solid, which is a which is a cone, right? Yeah, which is a cone. So this is the cone which is placed exactly on top of the cylinder. So it's indirectly telling you that the radius of the cone is also going to be how much? six centimeters this was the logic every time i tell you solids are surmounting whatever is the base radius of the first solid the same is going to be the base radius of the second solid i restore this in your mind now in which language should i teach you urdu or what now, such simple language i'm using the word surmounted is used that means whatever is the base radius of the first solid the same is the base radius of the second solid Use the logic, children. And then, what is the height? Height is 9 centimeters, right? Here I will use H1, here I will use H2. We are asking you to find the mass of the pole. What is the meaning of mass? Not the physics wala mass, okay? Which Yosa teaches you. This is the normal maths wala mass, the weight. Okay, the weight of the pole. Given that 1 centimeter cube of iron has 8 gram of mass. Children, I told you, when they have used one centimeter cube, you should understand that they want us to find the volume of the solid, isn't it? We have to find what? The volume of the solid. So how will you find the volume of these two solids when they both are attached to each other? First, you will find the volume of the cone. Then you will find the volume of the cylinder and you add both of them. What do you get? the volume of this entire solid, right? The volume of this entire solid. So let me start with the volume of cone. What is the formula volume of a cone? 1 by 3 pi r square h. Pi r square h2 plus. What is the volume of cylinder? Pi. What is the volume of a cylinder? Pi r square h. So pi r1 square. Sorry. Pi r square h one okay now this is equal to whatever you can take as a common factor take it out what is common here pi and pi then r square and r square isn't it so pi and r square is common inside the bracket what is left one by three into h2 plus h1 this is equal to now see formula simplification is done huh? now you can substitute the values 22 by 7 into what is the radius? 6. So 6 into 6 into 1 by 3 into what is H2? 9 plus what is H1? 110. Well, when you simplify this, you will get the answer. So 22 by 7 into 6 into 6 is 36 into 1 by 3 into 9. 3 and 9 gets cancelled. So 3 plus 110. This is equal to 22 by 7 into 36 into 3 plus 110 is 113. If you people feel that I'm very weak in doing calculations, do it repeatedly at home. What else option you have? Isn't it? You're not good with something. You have to give yourself that training. You don't have any other option. Nobody can come and do these calculations for you in the exam. Please understand that. Now, 22 by 7 into 36 into 113. This is what the volume of the given solid. But did they ask you to find the volume of the solid? No. 
they indirectly ask you to find the volume so that from there you can reach the mass of the solid, isn't it? One centimeter cube is equal to how many grams? It is eight grams, isn't it? Therefore, 22 by 7 into 36 into 113 centimeter cube will be equal to how many grams? This is what I have to find, isn't it? Don't do all these steps in the exam. I'm explaining something to you. That's why I'm showing you the unitary method. In the exam, what you will do? You will just write mass is equal to 22 by 7 into 36 into 113 into 8. Just do this and you get the answer. Are you getting it? Loka, did you follow this part? Huh? This is what? The volume of the solid. Isn't it? This, 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 this is what? Centimeter cube. Now you're converting that centimeter cube into what? Grams. So whatever volume you got, children, I repeat, whatever volume you got for this solid, which is 22 by 7 into 36 into 113, that has to be converted into grams. What will I do? I know one centimeter cube is 8 grams. Therefore, this, this, this much of centimeter cube will be equal to this value multiplied by 8. Whatever answer you get, that is your final answer. Online students, did you all follow what I taught? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, please do write it in two decimal places if you are getting decimal values. Yeah, it is decimal value. <laughs> huh. And when you're writing the decimal value, kindly write three decimal places. Why? Because Oh, achha. this is gram, no? Two decimal places is enough. Two is enough, two is enough. Sorry, children, this two is enough. Very good. Gopika, Amal, Sia. Arthur, did you solve it? Maria, Priya, solved it? Okay. What is the answer? Point how much? Point eight. Point eight. Yeah. Uh, Amal, I think it is point eight, Amal. The decimal value. Okay. After the decimal point, it is eight. You have got one, two. So I think some <laughs> minor calculation mistake is there. Pay attention. Put your pen down. Joshua, Jaren, Monish, pay attention. Yeah. Loka. A solid consisting of a right circular cone standing on a hemisphere is placed upright. A solid consisting of a right cone and a hemisphere. That means hemisphere is here, this way, and cone is here, isn't it? This is how you combine a cone and a hemisphere. You all agree with that? Rona, is it clear? Now this solid has to be placed upright. Where children? In a right circular cylinder. So this is your right circular cylinder. And you have to place this cone and hemisphere into it. Now are you getting the meaning? Huh? I tell you, you know, when I teach, I use this method. And when you practice at home, you have to follow the same method, at least while practicing. How many of you go home and do? Nobody does that. Nobody even will open the book to dust it. I have that much of confidence. Otherwise, you people can solve this sum. It's not rocket science. Array, you read a solid is a solid is there, which is consisting of a cone and a hemisphere. You all know how to visualize it. 
cone is above and hemisphere is below they both are attached to each other and where you are going to place the solid into a cylinder isn't it so this is how you must be drawing the figure this is the cylinder right into the cylinder you are going to draw that cone and hemisphere which are attached to each other diagram is done what was so difficult or complicated in this nothing now let's read the dimensions find the volume of water left in the container okay fine we will find what is the volume of water left but before that we need the dimensions isn't it yeah the radius of the cylinder is what 3 cm Mm, so i will be using capital r okay capital r is equal to 3 cm the height of the cylinder is how much 6 cm mm. the radius of the hemisphere all right the radius of the hemisphere i'll take r small r is equal to 2 cm height of the cone height of the cone is how much 4 cm labeling is done done now let's read what is the question to be solved find the volume of water left in the cylinder when you dropped that cone and hemisphere combination into the cylindrical container what children archimedes principle isn't it hello how much will be the water left inside the container archimedes principle is what you have to use all right now children if you still didn't understand the logic behind this sum i will give you one simple example imagine i have a cylindrical container which is filled with 50 liters of water and i am dropping a solid into it imagine it is a cone i am dropping a cone into it huh and i am telling you that the volume of this cone is 20 liters 20 liter or 20 cm cube whatever all right i'll do one thing here i will say 50 cm cube and here i will say 20 cm cube all right the volume of water contained inside the cylinder is how much 50 cm cubes i'm dropping a cone into it whose volume is 20 cm cube i'm asking you what will be the volume of water left inside the container how much will be the volume of water left inside the container you all know if the volume of the cone which you have dropped into the container is 20 cm cube then the quantity of water which will come out the quantity of water which will come out that will also be 20 cm cube you have to accept it huh? according to the archimedes principle whatever is the volume of the solid which you drop into the container the same volume of water will also come out of the container isn't it so in this case the volume of the cylinder was the volume of the cylinder was 50 cm cube into which you dropped a cone of 20 cm cube that means 20 cm cube of water has come out then if i ask you how much water is balanced left inside the container what will be the answer tell me kenju 30 why because out of 50 Twenty has got spilled out, isn't it? So how much is left? Thirty centimeter cube is left. Apply this logic. Apply this logic, and you can solve the sum. They are asking us to find out how much water is left when you dropped that solid into the container. So what you will do? Volume of water left is equal to volume of the cylinder. Minus the volume of the solid which you dropped into it, as simple as that. Did you understand? Hmm? All right. So if you don't want to substitute the values of volume of cylinder, volume of solid together, do it individually. Do it individually, and then you bring it over here. Okay. Nobody will cut your marks for that. So first of all, let us find out the volume of cylinder. Children, volume of cylinder, which is pi. capital r square capital h pi into what is capital r 3 so 3 into 3 into how much is h 6 so 3 into 3 is 9 9 into 6 is 54 54 pi 
centimeter cube. I'm just keeping it as 54 pi centimeter cube because I don't want to take the value of pi here. I am hoping that towards the end that pi will get eliminated or pi will be taken as a common factor. All right, it's just an anticipation children that I will be able to take pi as a common factor going forward. Now there is no harm, even if you take the value of pi as 22 by seven and solve it over here. But that is just a recommendation, okay? Not to use the value of pi directly. Now let's find the volume of the solid that would be equal to how much already? Volume of the cone plus the volume of the hemisphere. Volume of the hemisphere. How do you find volume of a cone? Is one by three pi r square h plus volume of the hemisphere is what? A two by three, right? Yeah. <coughs> two by three pi r q. <clears throat> now here also I can take something common. One is one by three, then uh, pi, and then r square, isn't it? Yeah. So H plus two R. You all agree with this? H plus two R. Do it carefully, okay? Now one by three into pi into R is what? The radius of the hemisphere and the cone? Two centimeter, all right. So here I will be getting two into two into. Height is how much? Four. Height is how much? Height is four. Plus two into two. Okay. Now this is equal to one by three into pi is pi by three, nothing else. Two into two is four into four plus two into two is what? Eight. Okay. So I am getting pi by three into four into eight, which is thirty-two. So you get thirty-two by three pi centimeter cube. So individually you found, so there are no chances of doing any mistake. Right now, I will go back to this formula volume of water left is equal to volume of the cylinder minus volume of the solid. Okay, minus volume of the solid. How much is volume of the cylinder? 54 pi. Right, so I'll write here volume of water left is equal to volume of the cylinder, which is 54 pi minus volume of the solid, which is 32 by 3 pi. Now this is equal to how much? Uh, let me take the LCM here. Right, three is the LCM. Three into 54 is 162, 162 pi. Don't forget that there is pi over here. We haven't eliminated it yet. Then three by three is one. One into 32 pi is 32 pi itself. All right. Now what is the 162 minus 32? 130. So 130 by divided by 3. Now 130 by 3 into. Now we don't have any other option. We have to use the value of pi, isn't it? So just substitute the value of pi as 22 by 7. Just do this calculation and get me the answer. Correct to two decimal places. Okay. Can you do this at Oh, I mean, can you do this after the class? Just the calculation part so that we can utilize the time in doing the next sum. Okay, here we go. The next sum of the day. Very easy sum. I expect everyone to solve this. Online students, Amal, Arthur, Gautam, all three have given me three different answers. 134.19. Who gave the answer? Okay. Nobody has given. Arthur has given 136. Amal has given 303. Sir, I think some calculation sir, mistake is there. Hmm. Yes, sir, I got 136.19. Same, sir. Same. 136.19. Just check the answer in your textbook, children. You can confirm it. If you have a textbook, where is the textbook? Ni football or the football or the football?
Where's your face? All right, now pay attention, even online students. Pay attention. Nabil, Joanne, should I come there? Should I come there? Pay attention. A metal container. A metal container in the form of cylinder is surmounted by a hemisphere of the same radius. Even if they don't use the term same radius, it's understood, right? Because it's surmounted. Hmm? The internal height of the cylinder is 7 meter. Children, focus on this part, internal height. And here, internal radius. When do we usually use internal height and internal radius? When the given solids are hollow, isn't it? Otherwise, they will simply tell you height and radius. If it is a solid, sorry, if it is a solid cylinder or a solid, solid cone, right? This is the difference, children. So now, here when I draw this shape, I will keep in mind that the shape is going to be hollow. Okay, somewhat like this. At least learn to draw good figures, children. Loga, you better learn how to draw. I'm telling you, people will misunderstand. Yeah. All right. So this is how you sum out a cylinder with a cone. All right. And the cylinder and both, sorry, both the cylinder and the hemispheres are hollow. Now let me label the internal radius and the internal height. All right. So here I will write H is equal to 7 meter. Then small letter R is equal to 3.5 meter. And I know I don't have to separately mention the radius of the hemisphere and the radius of the cylinder. Do I need to do that? No. Why? Because cylinder and cylinder and the hemisphere are surmounting with each other. So whatever is the base of the cylinder, the same will be the base of the hemisphere also, right? So that is why in common, I am taking the radius of the cylinder and the hemisphere as small letter R, which is 3.5 meter. Okay. They were asking you to find a very simple thing, children. The total area of the internal surface. The internal curved surface area, that's what they meant, isn't it? Because when you peep into this solid, now you are able to See the internal portion of the solid. What will be first visible to you? What will be first visible to you? The internal curved surface area of the cylindrical portion. And that will be 2 pi Rh. Then when you're peeping into it, huh, the next thing that will be visible to you will be the internal curved surface of the hemisphere. How do you find internal curved surface area of the hemisphere? Curved surface area of a hemisphere. What is the internal curved surface area of a hemisphere? It is? G1, what is it? Internal curved surface area of a hemisphere, what is it? Uh, 2 pi r square. Like this, I need the answers when I ask you something. Okay? <laughs> so this formula is what? 2 pi r square. And this is what you had to find, children. So simple question it was. Isn't it? Internal curved surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi Rh, an internal curved surface area of a hemisphere is what? 2 pi r square, isn't it? Just add both of them. So you can write here internal curved surface area, CSA is equal to 2 pi Rh plus 2 pi r square. So 2 pi r will be taken out as a common factor. Inside the bracket, you will have H plus R. Do it. Sajin, is it clear what I explained now? Yes, sir. Oh. Do it. 
2 into 22 by 7 into radius is given 3.5 into h is 7 plus radius is again 3.5. So 7 ones are 7 into 0 0.5. So 2 into 22 into 0 0.5 into what is 7 plus 3.5? It is 10.5. Okay. Find the answer. All of you. How much? 231. 231. Perfect. 231. 231 uh, meter square, right? Yeah. Very good. See, uh, uh, Maria, this is also the TSA of a solid cylinder. Mm, ah, yes, Maria. Yeah. Maria, external curve surface area of a cylinder, internal curve surface area of a cylinder, same logic. Okay, here we are finding the internal portion. So, 2 pi small r h. That's the difference. Okay, yeah. Next question. Next question, an exhibition tent, huh? Similar sum we had done before where there was a wastage of 15 percentage. Here the wastage, not wastage, cloth has to be used for, for folding and stitching, isn't it? You are there in that class, I still remember. Yeah, start doing. <coughs> an exhibition tent is in the form of a cylinder surmounted by a cone. So this is how your diagram will look like. Cylindrical shape at the bottom. Cylindrical shape at the bottom and conical shape on the top. Okay. Now let's write out the dimensions. The height of the tent above the ground is 85 meter and height of the cylindrical part is 50 meters. So those who have a confusion in this part. First of all, you mentioned what is the height of the cylinder. It is 50 meters, right? I'll write it as H1. Now, children, the height of the tent from the ground is how much? Total 85. So, if you take the height of the cylindrical part, it is 50 meters. How much will be the balance height? Exactly. So, I can write H2 is equal to 85 minus 50 and that is equal to 35 meters, right? The radius of the cone will remain the same. How much is the radius of the base of the cone and the cylinder? 168, right? Sorry, 168 by 2. So I'll write here small letter r is equal to 168 by 2, and that is equal to 84 meter. Here also I will mention r is equal to 84 meter. Labeling is over. Nabil, pay attention here. They are asking you to find the Quantity of canvas required to make the tent. Allow 20% extra for fold and stitching. Give your answer to the nearest meter square. Children, first they are asking us to find the quantity of canvas required to make a tent. Hmm? Then allow 20% extra for folding and stitching. That we will do later. Children, similar sum I had taught you before also. Isn't it? You will allow 20% for stitching and folding later. First of all, you find out how much quantity of canvas is required to make the tent. How much will be the canvas needed? It will be the curved surface area of the cylinder plus the curved surface area of the cone. Now, this is equal to... Maria, I think you got confused. There was one question where the canvas is bought and from that canvas, there is a 10% of wastage. In that case, we assume that the area of canvas which we buy is x meter square. From there, 10% of x is wasted and the balance portion is used to prepare the tent. That is a different case where you're purchasing the canvas and then wastage is happening. Here, they are asking us to first find the amount of canvas needed to prepare this tent. That you find. And then you will add 20% extra onto it so that it can be used for folding and stitching. Understood the difference between both? Yeah. So there is no space for confusion. So curved surface area of the cylinder. What is the formula? 2 pi Rh. Plus curved surface area of the cone. That is pi Rl. 
So then you need to find the value of L. Can you do it? How much it is? 91? All right, I'm not going to do it for you. You find it on your own, okay? Hmm. So what, oh, wait a minute. What is common? Pi R, pi R, isn't it? So take pi R as a common factor out. Nabil, look here. Are you listening to me? Are you copying it? And then, no, now you listen to me. Learn from me. 2H1 plus L. Now we can substitute the values into this. 22 by 7 into, what is the radius? It's common for both. 84 into 2 into H1 is what? 50. Slant height is what? 84. To 91. All right, sorry. It's 91. Simplify. Uh, 7 ones are and 7 into 12s are, right? So 22 into 12 into 2 into 50 is 100 and 100 plus 91 is 191. So you have to multiply such big numbers and you will get the meter square, no? <laughs> How much it is? <clears throat> pi zero. <clears throat> pi zero, pi one, four meter square. <clears throat> We'll just confirm it. 22 into 12 into 191. 50424. Yeah, 50424. Even do it again. Aditya, did you get this much? Yes, I got it. I got it. All right, very good. Now, pay attention. Shall I throw this on your head? No, right? Pay attention here. Pi zero four to four meter square. This is the area of the canvas required to prepare the stent. Now, children, I know that some portion has to be folded, some whole portion has to be stitched or embroidery. Uh, whatever fashion you want to apply on it, you can apply. But that is possible only when twenty percentage of more canvas is added. You have already found out how much canvas is needed. You didn't find it. You found it. Very good. So, children, let's find twenty percentage extra. 20 percentage extra will be 20 by 100 of the actual area of the canvas needed. So 20 by 100 is what? 1 upon 5. Isn't it? 1 upon 5. So 1 upon 5 into 5, 0, 4, 2, 4. Now let's divide this. 5, 0, 4, 2, 4 divided by 5. Get me the answer. 50424 divided by 5. I want you all to get me the answer correct to one decimal place, okay? Minimum one decimal place. Uh, Maria is saying it is uh, 10,084. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I think it is 10084, right? You missed one zero. One zero zero eight four point eight. Did you all follow it, Ria? Is this clear? The concept is clear. 20 percentage of the actual area of the canvas is needed extra for stitching and folding. So that is what we are finding here. 20 percentage of the actual area of the canvas. Is yeah. that part clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Somebody is 120 by 100. What? 120 by 100 into 50,424. Five, 5, Perfect. That is perfect. 50424 plus the additional canvas which you need. You add these two and whatever is the answer, that is your total area of canvas needed, including 20 percentage of extra canvas. Okay. Now, children, they are asking you to round this off to the nearest meter square, isn't it? They don't want us to write the decimal value. So can somebody help me with this? 50, sorry, 1008, 4.8. Are we getting 60508.8 meter square? Very good. Yeah. So they want us to round this off to the nearest meter square. Children, after the decimal point, you are having 8, which is greater than or equal to 5. Round this off. So it becomes 6050. 509 meters square. Okay. 
this is your final answer all right very good janus amil sorry amal yeah the last sum of the day 10 more minutes to go do it fast <laughs> a solid is in the form of a right circular cone mounted on a hemisphere isn't it let us first of all construct this solid okay let us construct the solid cone is mounted on a hemisphere now you are having a doubt they have used the word only mounted isn't it now mounted and surmounted are equal no i told you when it is simply mentioned as mounted huh it can be the radius of the base of the first solid and the second solid are equal or it may not be also equal isn't it huh if it is equal they will make an effort to mention that in the next sentence children i think they have taken a taken an extra effort in mentioning that the diameter of the base of the cone which exactly coincides with hemisphere you people don't have the patience to read also are you read now why it is given to you the question which i am reading that the same question is given to you also how come you people miss out on these important words ha huh? how do you think height of the hemisphere eda why is that eda comma ek endra pin idne eh read it like this the diameter of the base of the cone which co exactly coincides with hemisphere is 7 cm and its height is 8 cm apa r the height whose height is it ha ah, it is the cone height okay yeah so children let me first of all draw the figure this is your cone okay and this is the hemisphere now since they both are coinciding the base of the cone and the base of the hemisphere are coinciding i can say the radius is shared how much is the radius hello the diameter is how much is the radius the radius will be 7 by 2 cm isn't it it is 7 by 2 it's not 7 because the diameter is given to you 7 by 2 perfect and what is the height of the cone and what is the height of the cone it is 8 cm done children a huh? solid is formed now what is happening the solid which you formed is placed in a cylindrical vessel children the solid which you formed is placed in the cylindrical vessel this way this is the cylindrical vessel into this you are putting this solid right i'll draw it again okay. i've drop the solid into it now let's see what happens it is placed in a cylindrical vessel of internal radius 7 cm and height is 10 cm so children they are just telling you that the radius of the cylinder is how much 7 and the height of the cylinder is equal to how much 
10 centimeter. How much water in centimeter cube will be required to fill the vessel completely? So children, if you notice, there was a small change in the way they framed the question. When you are dropping this solid into the container, was the container having water inside it? No. The cylinder was empty. Loka, what was the cylinder? The cylinder was empty. The cylinder was empty. Isn't it? After dropping the solid into the cylindrical container, they are asking us to fill it with water. Isn't it? They are asking us to fill it with water. Let me fill it with water. Green water, okay? So children, you are going to fill it with water. Hmm? They are asking you how much quantity of water will be required to fill the cylindrical container. What will be the logic? The total volume of the cylindrical container minus what? The volume of the solid. Isn't it? Because the cylinder is actually occupied with the solid. So the portion or the volume which is taken over by the solid, that much volume will not be filled with water. Isn't it? So whatever is the balance quantity, only that much amount of water has to be filled into the cylindrical container. Did you follow that, Joshua? Understood? Okay. Huh. Same you did? Did I beat you? No. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So volume of the cylinder minus volume of the solid. Now I think you all can do from here. Volume of the cylinder is what? Pi R square H minus volume of the solid that you have to do it separately, children. Okay. Solid is what? Cone and uh, hemisphere. No? So 1 by 3 pi R square H plus uh, hemisphere. That is 2 by 3 pi R cube. Do it individually, children. If you do it together, some or the other mistake will happen. So volume of the cylinder you find separately, volume of the solid you find separately, then club it together, subtract them, and that's the answer. Anyways, they haven't asked you to convert this into letters, isn't it? So you are on the safe side. Um, so let me ask you one question. 1347.5 is what? Many of them are answering. Aditya, you also got the same value. 1347.5. So I'm doing it, so I'll tell you the answer when I get it. All right. Now, children, imagine I want you to convert this into letters. Give me the final answer in letters. The last part of the question, do it for me. Convert this into letters. Uh, let me ask this. Children, one centimeter cube, one centimeter cube is equal to how many letters? How much? Children, answer me in the chat box. Zero point zero zero. Ah, Maria went wrong. One centimeter cube is one by thousand liters. Isn't it, Maria? And one, me one meter cube, one meter cube is equal to how many liters? Loga? Uh, one meter cube is equal to how many liters? One meter cube is equal to one meter cube is equal to how many liters? I'm going to fry you guys before going for the boats. Maria, one meter cube is equal to Maria. You also start coming for offline. I'm distributing pedas over here. Okay. Yeah. And that are? That are. All that is serious. Padichondo, Anna, no. 
there is no yeah so 1347.5 centimeter cube if you want to convert this into liters remember children 1 centimeter cube is 1 by 1000 liters and 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters note it down 1 centimeter cube is 1 upon 1000 liters and 1 meter cube is 1000 liters i taught you this earlier so here anyways you have to convert centimeter cube into liters so it is 1 upon 1000 liters so that would be equal to 1.3475 liters huh? just round it off to three decimal places because 1 liter is equal to 1 liter is equal to how many milliliters pretty 1 liter is equal to how many milliliters uh, See how much is uh, one liter is equal to how many ml? Thousand, sir. Thousand. Thousand, isn't it? Thousand. Thousand, isn't it? Yeah. So, children, after that, listen to what I'm saying. Children, so after the decimal point, just round it off to three decimal places and then write liters because each liter will have only 1000 milliliters, isn't it? Huh? So you have to round it off to exactly three decimal places. If you put the fourth decimal place, technically it is wrong. Okay, technically it is wrong. All right, so that's enough for the day. Tomorrow again, we are going to have our regular classes, one and a half hours. Tomorrow, which chapter should I start? Heights and distances? Huh? That we will do towards the end. Children, if you all agree,